days like today, I love living in Las Vegas. However, there are some things I do hate about living here. Hey you guys, it's Ruby. Now, 18 months ago, my husband and I sold nearly all of our belongings, jumped in a car, and moved to Las Vegas. I made a video kind of explaining my experience and how I felt living here after being here six months. And that video did really well. You guys had some awesome comments, and I know people were kind of dying to know how I feel now. So it's been about a year since that video, and I figured I would share with you how I feel living in Las Vegas, but most importantly, I know the thing that you really wanna know. 10 things I hate about living in Las Vegas. I'm gonna pepper it in with some things that I also love, because what can I say? I'm a positive person. <laughs> okay, first thing I hate about living in Las Vegas, let's just talk about driving. When I first moved here, I had my thoughts and opinions on how people drive here, and they've definitely changed. For one, I do think people drive really slow, but I kind of understand why. Here's the thing, if you get stuck at a light in Las Vegas, you can sit there for as long as like five minutes. We've sat at a light for a very long time. What's happening then is that there are people that will blow through the light and people are getting into accidents and getting hurt. So I now get why when the light turns green, no one goes, they just sit there because they're waiting to make sure no one's blowing the light, which is outrageous, honestly. So I do sympathize when people are driving on the roads, why they're going so slow. But I'm sorry, on the highway there is no excuse. And that is still continuing. We have traffic here and we have a lot of people, but nowhere near the amount of traffic that you see in other really big major cities. And a part of it is just people driving really slow in the left lane. There is no excuse to be driving under the speed limit in the far left lane. That is the fast lane. I'm gonna die on this hill, it really bothers me. And the other thing that goes along with that is that they're not driving slow because they're being really attentive or they're nervous. They're not paying attention. A lot of people are on their phones, swerving in and out of lanes. It also seems like there's a lot of people that don't know where they're going, even though they have Nevada plates and they're like last minute shooting over into their, their exits and like not paying attention while they're driving. That combined with the crazy scary drivers and they are out there, people that are blowing through the red lights, that are on the highway going 150 miles an hour, weaving in and out of traffic and being really dangerous. It's such a lethal combination of those two drivers that it makes it a really unsafe place to drive here. And it's just not acceptable. I really think we need more <laughs> policing on the highways and on the roads and pull these people over and make sure that people are not on their phones and that they're not driving like Wile E. Coyote because it's really dangerous. Let me talk about a pro, something I do like about driving in Las Vegas. Everything is so close. I love how they designed this city. You are never really more than 30 minutes from the airport, depending on where you are. And for us, the farthest place to go is Henderson. And anytime we have to drive to Henderson, we complain because we're like, oh, so far. And it's not far at all. Most stuff is easily like 15 to 20 minutes away. So convenient, the highways are set up really nicely and it's just really well thought out the city, especially here in Summerlin where we live. Getting to anything is like five minutes. It's fabulous, I love it. So I'm really glad everything is close because of how bad the driving is. To piggyback on how much I can't deal with the driving. <laughs> Another negative is definitely the insurance rates for driving here. I already talked about in the previous video, if you didn't see my last video about how expensive it is to register a car here. But now it's also incredibly expensive to insure a car. When we first got here, we picked Geico um, and I think it was like $150 for one car for the two of us, but that was full coverage on a lease. And it was more than we pay in Wisconsin. We were paying that for like two cars, but we figured, yeah, it's gonna be a little more expensive here, no big deal. Then they raised our rate six months later to like $220 and six months after that to $330 over the span of like a year and a half. We have no accidents, no tickets, and we have good credit. So we couldn't believe it. We were in total shock. And they just said, yeah, the rates have gone up. We obviously ended up switching, picked another insurance company for cheaper because 
I mean, that's just crazy. I I know that that is because of how dangerous it is to drive here, and I really hope both of those issues get fixed. Oh my gosh, something I hate about Las Vegas, construction. This is so funny to me. Um, I saw a lot of comments and things about construction in the city, and I didn't think it was any real big deal. In Wisconsin, there's a gag that they say the four seasons are almost winter, winter, still winter, and construction. So even there, there's like this big construction season, everything's ripped up. But here in Vegas, they rip stuff up like they're gonna do construction and they don't finish it. We live near Vegas Drive. They came, ripped huge holes, like big chunks out of the road, repaved them and left. So it's like speed bumps, the whole road. I don't know what's going on, but I hate that they start projects and don't finish them and that there are so many unfinished closed up and unpaved roads. It's just really messy. It's not a good look and it is definitely a nuisance. So I do get the joke that the construction cone is the state flower. That makes total sense and it is pretty funny, but it is something I hate. Okay, another thing I hate. Let's talk about how it is expensive. My relationship to this is kind of warped because we would come here for work and I was used to just spending a ton on our breakfast, lunches, dinners, because we were living in the hotels. Um, and moving here, we did know it was going to cost a lot more than where we lived. So we were already prepared for that. Gas is definitely more expensive. Groceries, you have to be really careful. There's no tax on groceries, which is awesome, but they balance that out by charging a lot. And I know they're getting expensive pretty much everywhere in the US, but it's really bad here. I think one time we saw a bottle of ketchup for like $7, that's so sad. So make sure you shop somewhere good like Winco. We found really cheap deals, Costco. Like you really need to watch out for that. And also because it is a tourist city and a tourist town, they charge more at the restaurants and things in the tourist areas, but we even find like local places do charge more, I think because they can. We didn't have this cat when we moved here. She's new. We found you in a car. Can you please? Please behave, please. We knew going in that this was gonna be more expensive and we also spend the majority of our time in casinos. And so I don't remember the last time I paid a normal amount for like a cup of coffee because the casino coffee is always expensive. Oh my gosh, we were on strip the other day and coffee was $7 for a black coffee. Black, nothing in it. Oh, so expensive. <laughs> so that's definitely a drawback, it's definitely a con. We just kind of knew it was coming though. Okay, another thing I hate the healthcare, this is fascinating. Someone commented on my previous video because I talked about how I loved the options for healthcare because we were able to get better insurance living here. And someone commented like, yeah, wait until you have to use it because the healthcare is really bad. They were right. <laughs> I had one experience where I went to the ER. I had food poisoning, I'm fine. But I was put in a room with a bunch of other people with an IV and then they were sharing the person next to me's medical information to them, like right in front of me. I didn't even know that was legal. It was wild. I've never experienced anything like that. I never got my own private room. We were all just like in rooms convalescing together. It was so odd. I've never seen anything like that. Anytime I'd ever used like an emergency room in the past in Wisconsin, I just got my own room. And then my husband, had an issue where he was having trouble walking on his leg. Like his, his leg was just giving him some pain and he was having some trouble. He went to his primary doctor and her exact words were, sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. I'm not joking, those were her exact words. It wasn't until my friend came to visit who works in an orthopedics clinic, watched him walking and was like, you need to get recommended to an orthopedics doctor and you need your back x-rayed. So he called his primary back and demanded those two things and went to the orthopedic clinic and they were great. And it turns out, do not sit on your wallet. Gentlemen, if you're watching this video, don't sit on your wallet. It's really bad for your back. And it was like pinching a nerve and it, we got it all fixed up that easily. So our primary care was bad, ER was bad. The orthopedic specialist he went to was great. I also went to an urgent care and I had a great experience. Like they were awesome. Okay, my next con. This one's still the same thing as last time, unfortunately, 18 months later, the internet is terrible here. Um, they do not have fiber everywhere. We really need fiber. We upload videos constantly and that takes up a lot of data and we don't have enough. 
and we keep calling and begging them to get the fiber. And they said that if it weren't for 2020, this entire area would have had fiber, but everything got shut down and it messed everything up. So I'm hoping fiber internet is gonna be coming to us soon. Another pro, again, something I talked about previously, the no state tax thing, but we filed our taxes for this year and it was awesome to not pay state tax. I will never ever complain about this being a tourist town because that is why we don't have any state taxes. It's all the people coming in and spending their money on the strip and it's amazing. For people like us who work for themselves, I don't know if you know this, but if you are like an independent contractor, if you work for yourself, you have to pay all of your Medicare and all of the social security. Whereas if you work for an employer, they pay half of that. So we already pay more in taxes just by being our own business. So that extra savings on the state tax is absolutely huge for us. And I think it's a big reason why a lot of YouTubers that maybe lived out in California and stuff are moving here. You are seeing that. And I think that is a huge reason why. No state tax is a huge plus. Okay, another thing I hate about Las Vegas, we definitely should talk a little bit about the homelessness. So I do feel that if you go to any major city where it is warm year round, you're going to see a lot more homeless. That being said, it is a pretty rampant problem here and it is not just in the tourist areas. We have homeless people that kind of hang around even in our really nice area in Summerlin. It's just kind of a rampant issue and I think it has gotten worse. I hope that the city and the state find some way to help these people and get them through their hard time um, because it is unfortunate. It's not something anybody wants to see, um, to see people struggling like that. It's not great. All right, a pro, the weather. We have to talk about the weather. I got so many comments saying, yeah, okay, wait until it's July. Wait until it's August. Wait until your electricity bill is $700. Oh, contraire, my friends. I live for the hot weather. I love it. Listen, it is like 100 degrees out right now and it is a balmy 79 degrees in this house and if you shuddered at that i am so sorry but i don't like to be cold and this is the only temperature where my feet are not cold i thrive when it's like 80 degrees in this house i do turn it down at night to make it a little cooler for us to sleep with blankets but we keep it warm i love that like april through october you can swim like it is just that hot out and then even the winters are mild, although I do get cold, but it is mild. It's, it's nothing compared to where we used to live. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, things I hate. So I had a subscriber come up to me and they're like, oh my gosh, how do you love living here? And we we're like, oh, we love it, it's amazing. And they said, oh, does it just feel like you're on vacation all the time? And without thinking, I literally went, oh no. And I could see their face kind of fall and I felt bad, um, but it's true. It does not feel like you're on vacation all the time if you move somewhere that you liked to vacation. Um, and for us, it's even more nuanced than that. So even before we moved here, when we were taking our monthly trips, these were work trips. This was us working 24 hours a day all the way until the end of our trip to get back home and edit and upload everything. Living here now, we get in our car, we drive to strip, we're filming, we're working, but in the back of my mind, it's, oh, I forgot to pull the chicken for dinner tonight. Oh, are the cats okay? Did we see them before we left? Did someone get stuck in a closet? Like these things kind of just invade your brain in a way that like your work and your home life all blends together and it doesn't feel the same as taking a Vegas strip. It just doesn't. I think that's okay. I, it's not as if I like the city less. In fact, I like it more. There's more things I like about it. There's different areas I like about Vegas. I still like the Strip. I know a lot of locals don't even go to the Strip. I still like it, even though I do go there for work. So my relationship's a little different with it. So if you move to your favorite vacation destination, just know it's not gonna feel the same. Or maybe for you it will, cause you're not, you know, filming your vacations for work, which makes them work. I don't know. All right, and my last thing that I hate about living in Las Vegas, we have to talk about the airport. I have a big gripe with the airport right now. <laughs> so we are one of the busiest airports in the country, which makes total sense, but you wouldn't know it from the size, especially the size of the parking lot here. We've had to fly out a couple times over the weekends and the entire terminal is full. There is no 
parking left, which means you have to go to Terminal 3, which isn't crazy far, but then you have to take a shuttle and get dropped off. And it adds like 30 minutes onto your time and it's stressful and a nuisance. And there are so many people living here that are gonna like fly out to LA for the weekend or go to California or whatever they need to do. Why do we not have enough parking? <laughs> and you don't wanna Uber, cause I know your next thing is why wouldn't you just Uber to the airport? Cause the Uber is crazy in the Las Vegas airport. It is so busy with tourists coming in. I wanna drive my car. So that is a huge pain. The airport in general makes me mad. I don't feel like it's particularly clean. I feel like it could be a lot nicer. This is such a busy airport and I've been to some really gorgeous airports and we are not up to snuff and it makes me mad. Also side note, this has nothing to do with Vegas, but does anyone feel like airport food is just horrible? Why is airport food so bad? Can someone explain that to me? Like every restaurant I've eaten at every airport was so bad. I don't get it. So after all that, all my, all my complaining about things that I hate about Las Vegas, how, what do I think? Do I still love living here? And the answer is of course, absolutely yes. The main reason being the weather, but I also get to do what I love here, create content, do my slot channel. Like I just owe all of that to this amazing city. And I don't think I'm ever going to dislike Las Vegas. I don't think I'm ever going to not want to live here. I could see this being our forever home. It's only growing and growing and growing. Uh, people are coming here in droves. And I think there's a reason for that. I think this place is an awesome place to live, even with all those drawbacks. So that was my list of the 10 things that I hate about living in Las Vegas, along with a bunch of stuff that I love. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys all in my next one.